you. Chapter number three. And I'm going to start reading at verse number 10. John the Baptist said, Now also the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is going to be cut down and cast in the fire. John said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that's coming after me, that would be Jesus. He's mightier than I, whose shoes of latchets I'm not worthy to bear. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Somebody shout fire. Wh whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, gather the wheat into the garner, and will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then comes Jesus. Shout, here comes Jesus. Ooh, when Jesus gets involved, everything changes. He comes from Galilee to the Jordan River under John to be baptized, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And Jesus answering said unto John, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it, it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John baptized him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. He wasn't sprinkled. He was dunked underwater. And when it came up, the heavens opened up. And the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And I'll draw our text just from a portion of verse 16. And the heavens opened up. And my subject this morning is the dimension of an open heaven. Father, thank you for your presence and your word today. We esteem your word more than our necessary food. Bless these feeble lips of clay, and we'll leave here stronger than we came. And everybody shout in Jesus' name. Uh, tell three people uh, uh, you're living under an open heaven. Uh, three, three people. Mm -hmm. Then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, in this context, John has come from the wilderness. He's he's a uh, unorthodox. He's wearing a camel's hair suit, and he's got. Uh, while honey and locusts in his beard. Verse number five said, though, all of Jerusalem, Judea, and the whole region came out to see John because he was moving in the flow of God. Now, at Genesis 1 and 2, we, we get the first introduction of our God, and the Scripture said the Spirit of God moved uh, on the face of the waters. And then the last thing we hear about our God in Revelations 22 and 20, uh, John said, even so come Lord Jesus. So our God is either coming or going. He's always on the move. Elijah said uh, when, when God passed by him that God was like a great strong wind moving in the mountains and breaking rocks into pieces. Dr. Luke said on the day of Pentecost uh, that God swept in like a rushing uh, mighty wind. So, so John comes from the wilderness uh, to the Jordan River to get into the pre-existing flow of God. See, you can't create the flow of God. You have to find it 
and just flow with it. Mm -hmm. Now, verse number six, John was leading a multitude into the Jordan River to be baptized. The Jordan River uh, is, is dry on one side and, and very fruitful fields and orchards and vineyards on the other side. You remember when the 12 spies went in to, to spy out the land. They came back and said uh, to Moses, the, uh, the land on the other side of Jordan, it's, it's flowing with milk and honey. It's a, it's a great land. The only problem is uh, uh, the, the people are strong and the walls are high and there's, and, and there's giants in the land and we are not able to do what God said uh, that we could do. Our children and wives would be vulnerable if we were crossing this Jordan and, and got stuck in the mud. It's just a very dangerous situation. But the first step to this open heaven, you have to go with the flow of God's prophetic word. You, you can't go by how you feel or how things look or, or what people are saying. If, if you question 10 people, you'd get 10 different opinions. Uh, it's just important to go uh, with what God is saying uh, in this hour. Verse 7, many of the Pharisees and Sadducees came to the baptism uh, of John, and when, when they did, John pointed his finger right at them and said, you generation of vipers. King Herod came out to John's meeting, hoping, hoping to get recognized for the political reasons, and he got recognized all right. John said, Herod, it's not lawful for you to be married to your brother Philip's wife. John was radical. John was wild. He was in the flow with God, and he didn't care what anybody thought. Uh, it popped up on my phone this week that an atmospheric river with, with more water in it in the heavens than the Mississippi River ha has caused massive flooding uh, in Southern California. And, and that flooding caused millions of gallons of raw sewage to be dumped into that beautiful Pacific Ocean. And when I was looking at that on my phone, um, uh, God began to speak to me and say that he was uncovering corruption and filth and stench uh, in this season that we're in right now. He's uncovering filth in the church house. In the courthouse, in the White House, in the whorehouse, I mean, and in your house, he's uncovering in this hour. But at the same time, Ezekiel 34, 26, God said, I'm going to send showers of blessing to my people at the same time from this atmospheric river that's dumping the blessings of God in this season, Hosea 2.15, the people of God were in a valley of, of Achor. Now, the Hebrew says it was a valley of confusion, chaos, and trouble. Put Hosea 2.15 on the screen if you can. But God opened a door of hope in the valley of trouble. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a great effectual door has been opened, but, but there's many adversaries. Revelations 3 and 8, Jesus said to the church of Philadelphia, I've set before you an open door, and no man can close it. Now, Isaiah 65, 10, the eagle eye prophet says that God will turn this valley of Achor into a resting place. Well, I, I, go, I did a Google search on this valley of Achor, and it popped right back on my phone 
uh, that, that through the door of hope, there's pure gold on the other side of this door. And the second step to this open heaven that we're living in right now, you got to get through the valley of chaos, confusion, and trouble to get to the door of hope where God has more for you. Shout, I'm getting through the door. <laughs> now, now, verse 13, here comes Jesus. Somebody shout, here comes Jesus. <laughs> He, he's coming from Galilee to the Jordan River. Now, now, now you know the, the Jordan River that, that separated uh, the people of God from, from the promised land. And, and, and the majority said, we're not able to cross the river and take what God said uh, that we could take. It was in the Jordan River that that the prophet told Naaman, who was the captain of the Syrian army, to go dip seven times in the Jordan, and that incurable disease of leprosy uh, would be healed. It, it was in the Jordan where, where the sons of the prophets were, were enlarging uh, the school of the prophets, and, and one of the young men had an axe head go flying off of the handle, and it went right out in the middle of the Jordan River. And they went to Elisha and, and, and said, we, it was borrowed, and, and we've lost this axe head. Elisha cuts down a tree, throws it in the river, and the axe head starts swimming. It comes up off the bottom of the muddy Jordan River and start swimming toward the bank. When you stay connected to Jesus Christ, he will cause things to move that ordinarily would not move. He'll cause supernatural things to begin to happen in your life, but you've got to stay connected to Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Now, that tree is a type of Calvary's cross. We're seven weeks from Passover today. But that tree was a type of the cross where Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died so the blessing of Abraham could be on our life this morning and we could recover things that we thought were lost. When I was studying this last night, God said, tell my people they're going to recover things they thought that they've lost and they would never see again, but it's going to come swimming back, baby. Push your neighbor and say, it's coming back. Yeah, he'll restore the year that the locust and the canker worm and, and the caterpillar have eaten up because we serve a God that restores. David said, he restores my soul. He makes my cup run over. Shout amen to that. Now, now, it was in the Jordan. It was in the Jordan. It was in the flow of the Jordan River that, that the Sea of Galilee flowed into. Jesus came from Galilee. You know the Sea of Galilee. It's where Jesus walked on the water. You remember the Sea of Galilee. It's when, when Peter had fished all night and caught nothing. Nothing was working. He was pulling up goose eggs. And Jesus said, Peter, cast your net out into the deep. And Jesus said to Peter, for a draw, there's a super catch if you'll cast out one more time. But, but Peter was wore out. He like some of you. He tired. You half asleep right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One lady texted me this week and said, Bishop, the reason I come to Christian world, I don't fall asleep in church. That's good. Because you never know will come flying at you if I... But Peter said, nevertheless, somebody shout nevertheless. 
at your word. See, God sends his word to heal and deliver. God's doing something right now. I feel it. But, but, but at your word, I'm going to cast out a net. Jesus said cast out nets because he saw things that Peter couldn't see. He, he knew there was a super catch, right? Now, now, the fish were not caught easily during the daytime. So, so Peter, he nonchalantly goes out. He was wanting to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And he dropped that one net, and the net broke and almost sunk his boat. He had to call for partners. He had to call for other ships to come. And they had a net-breaking, ship-sinking draught of fishes like nobody had ever seen before in the Sea of Galilee. Miracles. Miracles flowed through the sea of Galilee into the Jordan River. Now, 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 Josephus the historian says that Jesus and John the Baptist had never met. Even though they were cousins, John had been in the wilderness. And Jesus had been in the wilderness of silence for 18 years. We don't hear anything about him. So here comes Jesus from Galilee and he's standing in the crowd of people. And John looks out and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. Now, it wasn't Jesus' clothes that caused John to recognize him. He'd never seen a picture. He'd never seen him on Instagram. The scripture says in Luke 2.52, it was the favor statue and wisdom of God that caused Jesus to stand out in a crowd and to be recognized. It's the anointing, the favor of God and the wisdom of God that's on your life that's going to cause you to stand out. People are going to hire you that don't even want to hire you. They're going to give you contracts when they're hesitant about get, because of the anointing and the favor of God on your life. And the third step to this open heaven, you have to walk in the favor, the statue, and the wisdom of God. I, I need to put Psalms 30 and 5 on the screens, but I need it in the amplified version, if y'all can quickly. Uh, God's favor is for a lifetime. It's not just Sunday morning. His favor is... Yeah, both shot the, yeah, there you go. Somebody said, come on, Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus is coming. <laughs> See, the favor flows through him. Um, yeah, the, uh, God's favor, ah, uh, yeah, is for a lifetime. And his favor brings life. Weeping may endure for a night, but baby, your joy is coming this morning. <laughs> Somebody's weeping days are over up in here today. And, and then verse number six, my prosperity shall never be moved. Devils can't move it. The government can't move it. The Antichrist can't move it. People can't move it. People can't steal it. You'll pro I'm sorry. Psalms 44 and 3, David said, it wasn't our strong arm are the sword that got us our land and possessions. It was God's right hand, his arm, and the light of his countenance that gave us favor. Somebody shout, I've got favor. No, everybody shout, I have favor. Oh, that makes the devil nervous. Scream it this time. See, be part of verse 13. Here comes Jesus. He, he's walking down 
down into the Jordan River. Here, here comes uh, the city Jesus fixing to hook up with the country John. Now, now, Jesus has on a linen robe. John has on camel's hair and, and locust uh, legs are still in his beard. And here they come. Mercy and truth is meeting each other. The, the, the fulfillment of, of God's prophecy all through the uh, Old Testament Testament, starting in Genesis chapter 3, that do you remember, do you remember when Adam and Eve screwed, I messed up, and God asked the question, Adam, where are you? Well, you know your God is omnipresent. You know he's everywhere at the same time. You, you know your very thoughts are heard by God. What do you mean, where are you? He wasn't asking for the first man, Adam. He was asking for that second man, Adam, Jesus Christ, uh, who would redeem us from the fall of sin in the garden. Here comes Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, verse 14. So, so Jesus and John are standing in the Jordan River together. Devils couldn't stop Jesus. Haters couldn't stop Jesus. The court system couldn't stop Jesus. The Supreme Court couldn't stop Jesus. Because he is unstoppable. If you will just stay connected to Jesus Christ... Your Bible said, if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. That's where I talk Jesus everywhere I go. I started a podcast that I didn't even want to start so I could be sending Jesus all over the world. It's Bishop Bo on the go. Now, Bishop Sides, he's the spiritual one. He's the steady one. He's the stable one. He's the one that sees things in the spirit. Bishop Bo, he can be controversial. Somebody said schizophrenic, but no. But, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, it just depends on which bishop you get. It's just like you. You got an evil twin that, that you got to keep under wraps. Be looking at me. See, but, 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 but this, wasn't, this wasn't the first time they had met. You, you, you remember when, when Mary tells Joseph, uh, baby, I'm kind of pregnant. But don't get upset with me because God did it. So, uh, Joe, he's having trouble with that communication. So, Mary goes to Elizabeth's house to get away from the crowd, to get away from Joe, to get away from everything. And, and you remember the scripture says when, when the two women salute each other or when they hug each other. Now, now Josephus said in his writings that Elizabeth thought that her baby was dead because there had been no movement. See, but because if things are not moving, it could be you're dead. That's the reason they check your pulse to see if blood's flowing. That's why the buzzards will just flutter over your body. If they don't see any movement in your eyes, you know what? They go for the eyeballs because they think you're dead. Mm -hmm. That's why they call money currency. 
Because as long as it's flowing, it's powerful. You try to hoard it, it'll stagnate, and the Bible said you'll lose it. So keep it flowing, baby. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So so now, when these two gals hug each other, your Bible says that John leaped in her womb. Because when you get touched by the presence of Jesus, things will start moving, baby. Things that you thought was dead. I'm talking about your dead faith, your dead finances, your dead feelings, your dead marriage. Don't look at your spouse right now. But when you get connected with Jesus Christ, everything will start moving again uh, because he's a God that moves. He, he's on the go. And, and, if you, and if you just sit still, you're going to be left behind. I want to stay in step and in the flow of what God is doing in this season, How about you? Shout, I'm going to stay in the flow. Now, 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 when, now be part of verse 14. Uh, 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 John said, listen at them arguing in the river. They're right there arguing in the Jordan where miracles have, have been flowing into for years. John saying, I can't baptize you. You need to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, no, you need to baptize me. And John said, no, no. So they're standing there right in the middle of miracles arguing with each other. That's just like people today. There's nothing new under the sun. You remember when the angel came to Gideon and said, you mighty man of valor. God's going to use you. And Gideon said, if God's going to use me, where's all the miracles? Why, why am I hiding up here in a cave? Why, why am I barely living from day to day? If God is with me, where's the miracles? They coming, baby. They in the flow. See, you, you're going to have to get in the flow with old Bishop Bo here today. I'm going to try to get you. See, you can't take people where you're never being yourself. See, I, I've been in the flow all this year, and if you'll come on with Bishop Bo, I'll get you in the flow before you leave up in here today. So there, verse 15, Jesus finally answers John, and Jesus said a strange thing, suffer it to be so right now. My baptism will fulfill all righteousness. Jesus, what are you talking about? The baptism of Jesus was a shadow and type of Jesus rehearsing what he would later fulfill on Calvary's cross. Oh, Lord have mercy. Jesus is rehearsing the death, burial, and resurrection right out in the middle of the Jordan River with miracles flowing all around him. Now, can I go pastoral for two minutes? I know y'all hate doctrine, but can, can I touch doctrine for just a minute and a half? Then go to Romans 6 and 3. As many, Paul said, as many as are baptized into Jesus Christ are baptized into his death. Verse number four. Therefore, and anytime you see therefore in the Bible, you got to find out what it's there for. I'm just trying to help you. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death, and as Christ was raised up from the dead, we also shall rise to walk in newness of life. For example, Randy, run up here right quick. Randy drove all the way from Wichita Falls just to hear me preach today. And a few other reasons. But 
But they diagnosed Randy with some form of cancer, wasn't it? What, what was it? In the tonsil. And um, I always say me and my bride and Jesus beat the snot out of cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I remember Randy reaching out to me and, and just saying, uh, they, they've diagnosed me with, with, with cancer. And, and see, there's, there's nothing, in, in, we work with tools, but there's nothing in your toolbox that can fix cancer, leukemia, sugar diabetes, but I said, Randy, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God raises you right back up because we both have too much to do. And here he is still running around still <laughs> six years ago. <laughs> and he's still on the run. He's still on the go because he connected with the flow. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, so, uh, the verse 16 of our context, Jesus went down. Oh, my God. He went down into that muddy Jordan River, in that river of miracles. He went, he went down. And ju- just like Naaman, he went down in, in that muddy water and came up, and nothing happened. See, people give Tylenol longer to work than they do God. They don't want to follow God's instruction. They want a quickie. But thank God for a servant that was hanging out with Naaman that said, Sir, if the prophet would have told you to climb this mountain, you know you would have climbed it. If he would have told you to swim across this Jordan River, you know you would. And all he asked that you dip seven times. And Naaman, you know, he's sophisticated. He's like some of you. You know, he got his helmet, got his titles. He got all his stuff working. Okay. But something was eating him up on the inside. Uh-huh. But... See, it's important who you hang out with. Well, Bishop, I'm, I'm, I'm just a long wolf. Yeah, yeah you're going to get eat up by them other wolves out there too. You better find you a family. You better find you a church that can counter your negative attitude. And you're, uh-oh, I'm, I'm, what? So he dipped seven times, when, but when he came back up, His skin was as smooth as a baby's butt. And then he was ready to give. Uh Uh-huh. Now, now Jesus, Jesus, he goes down under the water and nothing happens. Can I help you with your see nothing days for just a minute here? You're going to go through days you don't feel nothing. That you don't hear nothing. You, you got to make it through those see nothing days. Remember Elijah, he's, he's praying for rain. You know, he's the miracle worker. He, he told Ahab it's going to rain. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky. But when his servant comes and says, I don't see nothing. I can't find you. You have people in your circle, the only time they call you is when it's negative or when things are bad. It's real, but Bishop, it's real bad. We've got it real bad. I've never seen it this bad. It's bad, bad, bad. Bad, 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 bad. To the bone. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just kept sending it back. You got to send those naysayers back where they came from. (laughs) Because Jesus Christ, he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's still a miracle worker. I don't care what your crazy friends had to say. Mm -hmm. So nothing, I mean, nothing happens. Not, oh, until, until the servant comes back and says, I, I don't see much, but, but there is a cloud about the size of a man's hand. 
And Elijah said, that's all I need, baby. Because I can hear now an abundance of rain coming. See, y'all didn't get too excited uh, about that atmospheric river uh, because Ezekiel said out of that river is going to come showers of blessings. Showers. Showers of blessing. God, I heard that before. I know, I know, but you're going to hear it again if you keep coming here. We're under an open heaven where there's showers. Ezekiel said showers of blessing coming down, down, down uh, from the windows of heaven. But then when Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened up. And God started speaking a word in season. Mm -hmm. The heavens, the heavens, and that's that's my text right there. The heavens were opened. The heavens. I, I I was sitting in my truck, my Ford truck, my King Ranch truck. With all my stuff in it, I carry everything in my truck. It's my mobile office. But I was just sitting there praying for you. You're welcome. And, and I went into a vision. Now, that, that doesn't mean I'm super spiritual. You know, the Bible says young men shall see visions. It just means I'm still young. But I went into a vision very clear. Okay. And I saw windows opened up over Christian world. And then God spoke to me and said, Christian world is under an open heaven. And I'm pouring out my blessings to them. He's got the windows open today. And he's pouring out blessings that you won't even have room enough to receive because they're generational blessings. It's not just for you so you can drown in the gravy, but this is a blessing to bless your kids and your grandkids and your great-great-grandkids. And uh, shout, I'm under an open heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, in fact, I want you to just shout, the heavens are open, the devourer is rebuked, and my season of blessing and favor has come. Somebody shout, here comes Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you received that, I want you to stand and give God one more high hand praise. Come on. Come on. You need to seal it in your spirit. In fact, Lord, take me to church so the people can seal this word in their spirit because the foul will come immediately and try to steal this word from you. Give your God 60 seconds of your best, highest praise. If you believe you're living under an open heaven. Come on, Job said, as the vapors go up, the rain comes down. We serve a God that wants to shower you with blessing. has not seen. Ear has... God's listening for a sound. King Balak paid Balaam the prophet to curse Israel. And Balaam said, I can't curse what God has blessed. They've got the shout of the king in their mouth. Nobody can curse them. No hex will work. No devil will work. No witchcraft will work. They're unstoppable 
as long as they keep the shout. I feel somebody's faith moving. God's resurrecting somebody's faith that has been hurt. You've been church hurt. You've been stuck in the mud, but God's rest. That's what I'm waiting on. Bishop, I don't believe all that's necessary. David said, praise him with the sound of the cymbals. Praise him on the high sound and symbol. David said, dance. The devil's nervous because he sees you moving. He wanted to keep you stuck. He wanted to keep you in the mud. Now, 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 John, I'm going to be standing on the Pacific Ocean tomorrow. It'll be Bishop Bo. I'll be on the go sharing Jesus with the state of California. How many know they need it? <clears throat> but I want you on the podcast that acts next Saturday. I want you to have me all over this platform. I, I want you to have Bishop Bo on the go moving with Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to move people out of their complacency. I'm going to try to move people and get them on fire for Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to move the people that have lost their first love. Be, 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 be. Oh, be, be seated. Jacob was in a dark place. In fact, he was on the run, and his brother was trying to kill him. Uh, there's nothing that'll get you seeking God like somebody trying to kill you, or cancer trying to kill you, or leukemia trying to kill you. He's in a hard place. He's in a dark place. Your Bible said he was exhausted. It's like some of y'all. Bishop, I don't think you have to be so animated. Look, I, I got to wake some folk up. See, everybody's not like Lionel. Lionel came with a coal of fire in his pants. Take off running just one time there, Lana. See what I'm talking about? I'm not trying to get Lionel excited. He was excited when he woke up this morning. He hadn't forgot where God brought him from. Like some of you. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. So, 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 so Jacob is in a hard place. Won't you thankful that God will show up when you're in a hard place? Oh, Lord, have mercy. And the heavens open up. And there's a Lord standing in the windows of heaven. 
And God said, Jacob, Jacob, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your family. In fact, I'm going to bless all the families of the earth that connect with you. I'm going to be with you. Shout God's with me. Go, go ahead and put Genesis 28 and 50. God, shout God's with me. He hadn't left you. You've just been listening to the devil. God, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I don't care what your religious friends have to say. Yeah, Genesis 28, 15. I'm with you, Jake. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I will not leave you until I've done what I said I'd do. See, God's not a man he can lie. Now, the reason, the reason some of the people of God never went into promised land, Hebrews 2 and 3 says, or 2 and 2, 2 and 2 and 2 and 3, whatever. They didn't mix their faith with the word that was spoken. They just didn't believe the preacher. That's why the Bible said, believe in the Lord, you'll be established. You'll be on solid ground. Believe in his prophets, and you'll prosper. Uh-huh. Let's go to three. Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 3. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to four. Let's go to four. Y'all aren't in a hurry, are you? Yeah. Shh. Don't, don't, don't go there. Let, let's go to Hebrews chapter four in verse number two. Let's go, honey. Preacher don't even know his Bible. The reason some of them missed out, uh huh is because they didn't mix their faith with the word that was spoken to them. You have a measure of faith. I can't come on your job for you. I mean, I can't jack slap your supervisor. I mean, I could. But you're going to have to mix your faith with this business, babe. Mm-hmm. Now, Jacob, when that heaven opened up, God started blessing him. Everything changed. He had been in a hard place. But now everything, and the fourth step is to endure hardness and haters, and the heavens will open up to you. Be part of 16. I got to hurry. When Jesus went under that muddy Jordan River, he was in a dark place. Now, this is a shadow and type of the grave. Jesus is going through everything. He's rehearsing in the Jordan River. His shadow is in the Jordan River where the transformation takes place. Mm -hmm. Jesus was dealing with rulers of darkness. You keep on living, you're going to run into a few rulers of darkness. You're going to run into something that your drugs can't help you with. And your therapist can't help you with. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Now, C Colossians 1.13, the scripture says, Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness. Put that on the screen if you can. I know I'm working y'all today. There it is. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of light, which is his dear son. So when you're in these seasons of darkness, it's a place of transformation. <laughs> see, see, Job went through a, a dark season. But he kept worshiping God, okay? 
He said, his wife said, you ought to just curse God and that. You got to be careful who you marry. Some of you guys have married some crazy girls. See, they, are, they won't even bring me to the marriage conference because the old man tells it like it, T-I-S-T-S. I'd run, every, I'm like John, I'd run everybody off. Come on, shout, preach it, John. I'm coming. He, he's translated us, okay, into the kingdom of light. And, and Job, he ended up with double for his trouble because he kept worshiping God. He didn't accuse God like some people do foolishly, shake their fist in the face of God. Your arms are too short, baby. Mm-hmm. And then look at Joseph. He went through a dark season, but he kept ministering. He kept ministering. He was in a he went to bed in a dungeon every night. With chains, and David said, the chains of iron hurt his feet. But he kept ministering. He kept ministering the word. He kept using his gift. He wouldn't let anything knock him out of the promise. And your fifth and final step for this open heaven, you've got to keep ministering and worshiping when you're in the darkness. If you receive the word of the Lord, stand and give him one more high, high hand praise. Come on. Shout, I'm under an open heaven. Now, now I know I'm anointed this morning and I brought my oil with me. Okay. If, if, if you've been stuck in a dark place, I want you to come around these altars. This is where miracles take place right here. I want you to come around these altars. If you've been stuck, nope, don't you dare take that. I may have to use that. Come quickly. If you've been in a dark place, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, God's anointed me to break you out of this, of this season of anxiety, this season of darkness, this season where everything just seems like it's hard. Mm-hmm. If you'll go with me, I'm going to get you right up out of that grave. I'm going to get you right up out of that dark place today so you can be a blessing to your whole family. Come quickly and I'm going to pray for you.